Hey, you. Who are you? Careful, I'm warning you. I'm not afraid of you, okay? <laughs> what do you want? Why did you do that? There must be some misunderstanding. Because you reckon theft is all about misunderstanding, do you? Give me my hands back, now. Your hands? And what are those on the ends of your arms? I can explain everything to you. You see, I'm no thief. You broke into my train, assaulted my driver, mutilated him, and stole his hands. Apart from that, you are not a thief. I have not stolen them, miss. Only borrowed them for a while. You've got to be joking. I'm not joking with you, miss. I would never take such liberties. They belong to Oscar, my automaton engineer. Why did you steal them? They are extraordinary. Real mechanical wonders. I would never have been capable of designing such hands myself. Never. Such workmanship. Such precision crafting. It is... It is incredible. Absolutely incredible. And just because you like them, you decided to steal them? I have only borrowed them, little missy. Temporarily, you understand? Of course, I shall return them to you when I don't need them anymore. <laughs> you can... Yeah, that sounds fair. Excuse me? You see, these hands are all I need to complete my plan. At last, I can finish off my automaton pianist and oh. fulfill my dreams. Duh. Everything is now in place. You see, I have converted this old, useless, stupid factory into a magical theater. As you can see, the furnaces, piping, chimney stacks, they've all been converted into one gigantic organ. I will be able to accompany the world's greatest living singer. Now all I need is her. <gasps> Whoa, have another cigarette, buddy. Who are you? Sergei Borodin, the director of the industrial city of Komkolsgrad. Or what is left of it, at least. But who are you, for that matter? And why have you stopped in my station without authorization? I didn't choose to stop in your station, but my train has a technical problem. My name is Kate Walker, and I'm an American lawyer. It is very kind of you to come so far just to visit this place. Uh, I repeat again, I never intended to stop here. I'm on a business trip. I'm a lawyer, goddammit. Right. And what brings you here? Like I said, <laughs> a stupid mechanical hitch. I'm sorry, I can't make heads or tails out of your story at all. Without my engineer's hands, I'm stuck here, you see? Everything I have designed, all that I have invented, everything is for her. Do you realize... The singer? Is that who he's talking about? Her. Oh, to hear her sing one more time... Here, in my factory! But who is she? Who are you talking about? Helena. The one and only Helena Romansky. Her voice is so pure, like an angel. One day she came here to Komkolsgrad. She sang here, you know, when our industrial city was in its heyday. Oh, so long ago now. It was almost unreal. It was magical. I remember it like it was yesterday. Then, later, a long time later, she saved my soul. She saved my life and gave it meaning. When I was told that the mining program was to be abandoned, that this industrial city was consigned to oblivion, that I, its director, would from then on be nothing but a guardian of these rusting remains of a bygone age. That is when I first formed my plan to bring Helena Romansky back to this factory. But this time, she would sing for me and me alone. 
And is she okay about this? <laughs> sure, sure. Once she finds out that I have done all this for her... Oh, I know how that's going to go. When she realizes how I converted this vast network of pipes and tubes to create one of the most impressive organs ever made. Then, you know this was no small achievement, miss. Once molten iron flowed through here, now there wafts only beautiful melodies. But then I realized I had to make an automaton pianist. I began to despair that I would never create hands that were intricate enough. But then you arrived. So lucky, don't you think? Uh, for <laughs> yeah, me. that must have been a happy coincidence for someone around here. <laughs> so, when will this Madame Romansky come back? When do I get my hands back? I don't know. Maybe someone should look for her. Tell her. Hey, why don't you go? Oh yeah, why don't I? The quicker for you sure. bring her back, the sooner you can carry on your business trip. Now, isn't that a good idea? And you promise that once Helena has sung, you will give me back my automaton's hands? I promise, my dear. You have my solemn word. Well, I guess I'm going to have to believe you. Where should I go hunting for this singer, then? I have no idea. But for a woman of the world like yourself, Finding her should pose no obstacle. Helena Romansky was a world celebrity, you know. I have collected many objects, souvenirs of her that I keep in a room. Creepy, probably pieces of hair. A shrine to her glory. Yep, creepy. It's like her own personal museum in a way. Perv, perv you and creepy. You should take a look. Probably is raped in. Oh, this is down from where we are right now. Okay. That's the rape den. Great. This whole story is completely nuts. Yeah. Okay, let's uh let's just see what he has to say about these other and things. And what if I helped you to make some other hands just for your automaton? Why should life be complicated when I already have what I need? And I very much doubt you are in any position to create such a perfect pair of hands. Yeah, fair enough. You mentioned an automaton pianist, didn't you? Where did you find it? I pieced it together myself, my dear. Interesting. Except for the hands, that is. I admit that I underestimated the intricacy of this part of the design. A pianist's hands are very important, after all. But enough. Now he has a perfect set of hands. Your passion amazes me. Have you designed any other automatons here? No. Clockwork mechanisms do not interest me as such. I simply needed a robot capable of accompanying Helena Romansky on my huge organ. Sexual innuendo. I adapted an existing model, a reject automaton secretary. I reconstructed it and adapted it to this new function. An existing model, you say? Did you ever know Hans Vorlberg? He was a kind of mechanical genius, like yourself. Hans Vorlberg? Yes. Or maybe... I don't know. No. What? No. Sure, I understand. The number of automatons still functioning in this abandoned complex is amazing, though. My dear... One thing is for sure. For many years, I have been totally alone here. If that man ever came to this city, he left long, long ago. I have to keep reminding myself that Hans is really, he's quite old by this point. And anytime I run into somebody like this, I think, well, could that be him? Like, is he just not telling me that, uh, that it's him and things like that? But he, Hans is quite a bit older. When you stepped on the train, you were trespassing on private property. Everything in this city, sweet lady, belongs to the state. And to all intents and purposes, the state in this city is me. 
<laughs> My train is not a part of this factory. And besides, we never would have stopped here in the first place if its engine hadn't needed winding. Well, as long as your train is at this station, it may be requisitioned and used for industrial purposes. Out of the question. And I forbid you to do so. Maybe I won't have to. Perhaps we can maybe come to some kind of agreement, my sweet lady. I hope so. And fast. All right, let's get out of here. Please excuse me. I have to go now. So be it. We're going to go looking for this guy. Um, Listen. Oh, that's obviously all Obviously, all okay. this has been just one big misunderstanding. So you're going to give me Oscar's hands back, and we're going to get out of your city immediately. Out of the question. I must have these hands. That is all. Okay. I was trying to Please see if there's anything me. on the control board. I have board. to go now. So be it. That I could uh, check out, but it's all it's all him. So let's leave and go check out his uh, rape den. I mean, his uh, his shrine room. It seems this monorail is controlled from somewhere else. Okay. I'm gonna walk in there, and the door is gonna shut behind me. I'm calling it right now. Don't do it. Oh god. Yeah, this is totally weird. What the hell's going on here? Young Helena Romanski's crystal clear voice moves amateurs and professionals alike. Gathered for the 9th Voix d'Or Festival in Brussels, the young Russian soprano was the revelation of the event. She is an exceptionally talented singer, and at the age, tender age of 20, Helena looks to, be, looks to have a very promising career ahead of her. Helena Romanski's finest numbers are collected here on this golden disc, millions of copies of which are being sold around the world. The Voice. Uh, that's kind of... never mind. <laughs> Comrade Helena Romanski sings for the people. Her series of recitals with piano performed in the factories of our great republic. After Kiev, our diva arrives in Kamkalsgrad. Ravishing Helena is seen here with the factory director, Comrade Borodin, and several admirers. Okay. Helena Romanski's success in Europe is assured. The great Helena Romanski, our nation's glory, appears and triumphs every night on Europe's most famous stages. Following from Milan, Paris, and Vienna, Helena Romanski gave an exceptional recital in which her voice was even more powerful and moving than ever. Helena Romanski is at this point the peak of her artistic career, and her recitals that year are exceptional. The high point in testimony to this greatness in her unforgettable interpretation of Rigoletto, sung with her dear friend, the Russian tenor, Frank Malkovich. Let us, n let us not forget that the latter has recently decided to pursue his career in the United States. Okay. Yesterday evening, adoring crowds filled out the Bolchoi to say their fond farewells to Helena Romanski, their diva, making her last ever public appearance. Romanski revolutionized lyrical artistry and her name has already passed into posterity. Through the well of emotion, her fatigue and illness, what? She merely managed to utter a tearful thank you. Not known at this address. Dear Helena, who's this from? Oh, this is from the guy. Pray forgive me such familiarity of tone. I've written to you so often and for so long now that I feel I have come to know you intimately through my correspondence. <laughs> this is so creepy. I hope if my previous letters have reached you that you share this feeling. I'm writing to you on this address for the 112th time? Yeah, officially stalker rape den. I hope that one day you will return there and you will find one of my letters. This one, maybe. I can only hope. It's just that I have so much to say to you, so much to share. 
My work progressed as well as I wrote before, the hardest part was to put theory into practice. But I am gradually finding solutions to the problems and have managed to add a whole host of fine adjustments. The grand organ is now nearly complete. I can't wait for you to see it. Madame, I have transformed my factory into a crown and I hope that you will be its jewel. It is a magnificent, magnificent stage, one worthy of your talent and beauty. Helena, I feel so close to you. You and you alone are all I think about. More time goes by, the more certain I <laughs> become that one day you will visit me in this factory that is dedicated entirely to you. I have immense hope in my heart and I'm awaiting your acceptance of my invitation. Yeah, this guy's got serious issues. Serious issues. I don't even think she's alive. I kind of get the impression that she was, like, dying. Or went to America, one of the two. Same thing, basically, if you think about it. Alright, there's not much else going on in here. Let's go see what he has to say about his stalkery ways. Listen, obviously all this has been just one big misunderstanding. So you're going to give me Oscar's hands back, and we are going to get out of your city immediately. Out of the question. I must have these hands. That is all. I'm sorry, I can't make heads or tails out of your story at all. Without my engineer's hands, I'm stuck here, you see? Everything I have designed, all that I have invented, everything is for her. Do you realize her? Oh, to hear her sing one more time here in my factory. Wait a second. But who is she? Who are you talking about? Helena. Yeah, yeah. The one and oh, I only. I didn't want to push this. I'm going to lose Helena my train of thought. Helena Romanski. I got to look at her book again. Her voice is so pure, like an angel. One day she came here to Komkoltsgrad. She sang here, you know, when our industrial city was in its heyday. Oh, so long ago now. It was almost unreal. It was magical. I remember it like it was yesterday. Then, later, a long time later, she saved my soul. She saved my life and gave it meaning. When I was told that the mining program was to be abandoned, that this in and is sh sure. Oh, I, I can skip. I wow, just found out about that. That's great. Okay, well, please excuse. So that doesn't matter because I think I don't know why this just clicked in here, but let's take a look at this. Um, press cuts. Oh no, I want to actually look at it. Uh, where is it here? She performed with somebody. Frank, this guy right here, isn't he the guy that's dating, like, my mom or something crazy like that? Malkovich. I'm pretty sure. Can I phone her? Oh, frick. Uh, wait. Oh, she does have memory. No shit. Oh, that's cool. Hopefully I have service down here. Hi, Mom. Kate! Nice. What? Have you seen the time? Why are you phoning me in the middle of the night? Oh, sorry, Mom. I forgot about the time zones. Did I wake you? Um, well, of course you woke me up. I, I was sleeping deeply, too. I've simply got to get my beauty sleep. I've got an absolutely crazy day tomorrow. I'm sorry. It's just that it's real important and urgent. I haven't got a lot of time. Well, if it really can't wait till tomorrow, Munchkin... Come on, tell your mommy what's up. Uh, no way I'm calling Dan for you, if that's what you want. Mom, listen, please. I seem to remember you're seeing a mar- Marovich, or something like that at the moment? No, 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 no. Malkovich, Munchkin. Frank Malkovich. Yeah, right. So, but he's an opera singer, right? That's right. 
They say he had the finest voice of his time, my dear. Imagine that. That's just great. So then he must have known a famous singer called Helena Romansky. She's Russian, too. Please, if you can ask him if... Listen, honey, if it's stars you're after, Frank knows them all. I'll just wake him up and let him tell you himself. You mean he's... Haha. <laughs> do you know this song, this woman named you? Oh, you do. Oh, Kate, listen, you're still there. Frank tells me he did hang out with a Romansky once, but it was... Platonic. That's crazy. You know those singers. She's a great soprano. Great. Does he know where she went? Does, does she still sing? Where does she live? One second, Munchkin. Do you know? I know there's a weird graphics thing happening Frank here. Frank says she was very ill and she withdrew from circulation. Really? Oh, what is... Oh, oh okay. Um, she went to rest in some spa somewhere. He thinks it was called Arlbad, but it was 15 years ago and he's not sure. And well, honey... When Frank wakes up, he always takes a little bit of time to get going, you know. Thanks a bundle, Grace. Mom. And Frank, too. You're both fantastic. Love you both. And thanks again. Catch you later. Okay, interesting. I have to reload this because things are falling apart here. Uh, this happens once in a while. I don't know why. So give me one second. I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. So obviously we have lots to tell this guy now because turns out that... My mom was dating that guy. I knew that name was familiar, too. That's Director. so cool. Ah, oh, it is you, Miss Walker. Director, I think I know where Helena Romansky is. My God. You have found Helena? That is fantastic. From my research, Helena Romansky is living in Arlbad. Arlbad? Helena Romansky is in Arlbad. You know the town, then? You know where it is? Of course. It was a famous spa resort. In its heyday, Arlbad welcomed all the big wigs of the regime. To be granted a stay there was a real honor. Today, the honor has gone, along with all the generals and colonels, all washed away with the sea. It sounds like a good place if you need to... Take it easy, or convalesce. I think Madame Romansky would be happier here. I think she'll prefer the peace and quiet here. The perfect tranquility of our little town. Okay, so now, like, are we good? How can I get to Arlbad? There is one way oh, that I'm gonna you have can. To go get her. Here, in the city... There are no suitable vehicles left. But that drunk old fool living up there, he'll have something. I thought he what was alone. What drunken old fool? You mean you're not alone? What's up there? You mean you haven't noticed the space compound on the plateau? What? There's still some pathetic old soldier guarding it. But he's more interested these days in reaching for another bottle than reaching for the stars. And you think this gentleman could have a vehicle for me? I haven't the slightest idea. If you catch him on a good day, then maybe. But good days for him are far and few between. I wish you luck. How do I get up to the space compound, then? There is a monorail that leads up to the Cosmodrome. When you are inside, I will activate the automatic pilot. Okay, well, let's get going. Okay, I'm going. Because that monorail thing is right outside here. I am here. counting on you, Miss Walker. All right, let's do it. Oh, yeah. Busy woman. Hello? Did I wake you up? I can't sleep at all. This whole business just keeps turning round and round in my head. What business, Dan? But, Kate, that argument we had, have you forgotten? I really need to talk about that again. Oh, you know, I guess we were both a little high-strung, that's all. But don't sweat it, okay? Yeah, sure. Getting carried away never solves anything, does it? I must say I felt really dumb when I hung up. Really? Yeah, I left the door to my office open and I was convinced everybody around heard me. <laughs> uh, I'm so embarrassed, Dan. Please say I'm sorry to your colleagues from me. It doesn't matter, honey. 
promise me that you will never put me in that state again. You're usually so delightful. I have the impression that this journey is putting more than distance between us. Well, it's true I'm living a whole load of new and amazing experiences. Okay, I see. And I still no Hans Warlberg? No. Keep me posted. You know how important you are to me. Hurry home, huh? I'll try. Big hug, Dan. I'm I'm not understanding 100% why I keep having these conversations with Dan. Like, what relevance does that really have? I guess it's just trying to drive home the fact that, like, you know, I have these, these people back home that want me to be there, and it's just stressing, you know, how much time I've actually been away. Oh my god. Now it would be my boss, probably. Hello? Kate! Nope. Oh, that you? How are you? Olivia, great, just the right person. Look, have you heard <laughs> of Helena Romansky? Uh, no. Is she some Russian fashion designer? <laughs> no, she's a singer. I'm going to be meeting her soon. I've just got to find a way of reaching Arlbad. Can you imagine how lucky I am? Not really. <laughs> well, what relations this singer got with the toy coke? You sure you know what you're up to, Kate? Uh, you sound really different, like you're changing or something. Look, what? it's like this. If I'm going to get to the end of my journey, I've got to link up this singer and the director of the Comcalsgrad Industrial City. Don't worry, I know exactly what I'm doing. Why did you say that I've changed? I don't know, just an impression. You sound more sure of yourself, like stronger, more confident. And that's a problem? There you go. Just takes one word and you're up on your high horse. <laughs> I'm beginning to see Dan's point of view. It's getting harder and harder to back you up all the time. What does that mean? Well, it means that I had a drink or two with Dan, because he wants to talk. Uh -oh. He feels a bit lonely, you see? And what's he been telling you? Nothing. He just has the impression you're slipping away from him. He can't see where you're coming from anymore. Like, we went to the movies the other what? day, and he said that you would have loved the film, but I told him that... You mean you're dating my fiancé? Yeah, like, what's no. going on? No, not dating Kate, just propping him up while you're away. All in a good cause. I can keep an eye on him for you at the same time. Uh-huh. What would I do without you? Oh, you're jealous. Well, that's a good sign. That means you want him. Now that he'll be pleased to hear. You seeing each other again soon? Tomorrow night. He invited me to dinner at the Goldberg. Oh, shit. You don't mind, do you, Kate? No, no, no worries. Look, I've got to go, Olivia. Take care. What is going on back home? You sound different. You sound more sure of yourself. And he's all like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Meanwhile, looking up with Olivia. Pretty pissed about it. Okay. Now we're at some weird old space station. Who knows what? We gotta find this drunk guy to give us a car. That makes sense. <laughs> when we come back, we're gonna go looking for him. Thanks, guys. Bye.